Hello, Craig Hartman with BFDs.com. Today we're going to talk about what is a speed pot. Well, let's start with that word pot. Pot is a contraction for the word potentiometer. In electrical circles, sometimes electrical voltage is referred to as electrical potential. So a potentiometer is something that gives us various voltages. It's also called a rheostat. So let's take a look at diagram one. You can see that a rheostat, or a potentiometer, is a very simple device composed of a resistor with a sliding contact. We're going to hook a 10 volt battery across that resistor, and then the sliding contact, represented by the arrow, is going to slide up and down that resistor. In this first diagram, it is at the top of the resistor, and so we see that the voltage on the sliding contact is approximately 10 volts. In the next uh, diagram, we slide the sliding contact down about halfway along the resistor, and in this case then, the sliding contact has a voltage of 5 volts. If we slide the sliding contact all the way down to the bottom of the resistor, then we have no voltage. So you can see that by sliding this resistor, sliding the sliding contact up and down the resistor, we can change the voltage on that sliding contract, sometimes called the wiper. Now let's hook this to a variable frequency drive. We'll use a 10 volt power supply from the variable frequency drive to hook to the resistor. And then we'll take the sliding contact and hook it to the speed reference input of the variable frequency drive. When we do that, by turning the potentiometer, we'll be able to adjust the voltage on the speed reference input. If we send 10 volts to the speed reference input, the drive will cause the motor to go full speed. If we send 5 volts, half speed, and 0 volts, then the motor will be completely stopped. Now let's take a look at some real potentiometers. This is a very inexpensive potentiometer that you could find at Radio Shack or other electronics distributors. It's composed of the resistor. It's composed of a sliding contact that is on this shaft and it's composed of three terminals. These two terminals are connected to either end of the resistor and the center terminal is connected to the wiper or the slider. By simply turning the shaft one complete revolution, we can move that slider from one end of the resistor to the other, effectively changing the voltage from zero to full volts. If you look at the diagram, you can see what this resistor looks like inside. It is composed of a graphite on a substrate and as you move the sliding contact along the graphite, it will then contact that at different voltages. Now here's another potentiometer. This looks very similar to the one we showed you before, with the difference that this is a 10 turn potentiometer. So it's got a small gear in here, and you will have to actually turn the shaft 10 complete revolutions in order to get that slider to go from one end of the resistor to the other. The advantage, of course, is that you can get more exacting voltages and more careful adjustments. Now this is a more high quality potentiometer. You can see that uh, if you turn this potentiometer, you can feel the quality of the potentiometer and you know that you can set it where you want it, it'll stay linear, it's more reliable and going to be better sealed against contaminants. So this does the same thing as the other potentiometers but at a higher price for higher quality. You can get uh, the other potentiometers for only a few dollars whereas very high quality potentiometers can be over a hundred or even many hundreds of dollars. Here's another potentiometer. This potentiometer is actually an explosion proof potentiometer. So you can see again the three contacts, but this will be a very expensive potentiometer because of the quality and because of the ability to use this potentiometer in high quality applications. One final point, before you buy a potentiometer for use with a variable frequency drive, make sure that you check out the manual for the variable frequency drive. Potentiometers come in various resistance values and wattage ratings, so make sure you get the one recommended for your drive. Well, that's all today. Make sure you check out other videos on VFDs.com.